Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this free fall question, they tell us that a football is kicked straight up into the air and it hits the ground 5.2 seconds later. So for part A, they want us to find the greatest height that was reached by the ball and we're going to assume that it was kicked from ground level and that they weren't holding it up or something like that. So let's draw a picture so we can better see what's going on. So I'm drawing a line here because what we're going to do is we're going to assume that ball goes up like this and then it comes down like this we have some arrows here indicating the direction so for the question we're only going to look at half of this at a time because right here we have the initial velocity and here we have the final velocity for this half or you can also say it's the initial velocity for this half and then the final velocity down here. So that's important because right here, the ball is going to stop in midair and the velocity at this point, at least in the y direction, is zero. So we'll be using that information in the equation to help us solve for the, the height that the ball went. Okay, so for part A, the equation that we'll be using is y final is equal to y initial plus vi times t or velocity initial times time plus one half times the acceleration times t squared. So we're only going to be looking at half of the equation. I like to think of it as the second half right here. It, it kind of doesn't matter either way. But what we're going to be doing then is we're going to say that the y final, the y final is zero so that the y initial is right here. So this is also y initial. So this is zero, which is going to give us zero is equal to y initial plus vi t plus one half half a t squared. And so now we want to solve for the initial y component. So we want to subtract this over there. So we have negative y initial is equal to v initial times t plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. So we can simplify it even further because the initial velocity we'll be assuming is zero, just as we were talking about at the very top, the velocity is zero in the y component, so this is gonna go away. So now what we'll be left with is negative y initial is equal to one half times the acceleration times the time squared. But we don't want negative y, we want positive y initial, so let's multiply both sides of the equation by negative one, which will then leave us with y initial is equal to negative one half times the acceleration times t squared. So now all we have left to do is to plug in our values into the equation. So let's come up here to give us some more room again. So y initial is equal to negative one half times the acceleration which in this case is only going to be gravity. So we have negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We'll be multiplying that by the time, and they say it's 5.2 seconds, but this is gonna trip up some students because remember, we're only looking at half of the time. So we need to divide that by two, which is going to give us 2.6 seconds squared. So that's a really important detail there. And so when we Plug that into our calculator. We have negative one half times negative 9.8 times 2.6 for the time squared, which is going to give us 33.1 seconds, 33.1 meters for how high the ball went for part A. So now that we have part A, let's give us some more room. And we wanna figure out what the speed was as it was leaving the foot that it was kicked, so the very initial velocity. So for b, we'll be using the equation v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus two times the acceleration times delta y. So we'll be using the delta y that we just solved for in here to help us find the initial velocity. The final velocity, as we've talked about a couple times, is going to be zero, so that can go away. Let's subtract over the initial velocity squared that we, uh, like we did up here with the initial y component. So that will give us negative velocity initial squared is equal to 2a delta y. We don't want negative v initial, so we'll multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1 again. So we have v initial squared is equal to negative 2a times delta y. 
And then now we'll square root both sides of the equation, which will give us finally V initial is equal to the square root of negative two times the acceleration times delta Y. And if we plug in our numbers again, we have V initial is equal to the square root of negative two times negative 9.8 meters per second squared for the gravity or for the acceleration and delta Y we said was 33 0.1 meters. So square root of negative 2 times negative 9.8 times 33.1 meters is going to give us the initial velocity for the ball of 25 rounded 25 meters per second.